All right, here we are, gang. This is the uh, heart of uh, industrial technology and blueprint reading. Uh, again, not everybody in industry or in industrial technology uh, will always be drawing or drafting uh, designs and prints, but everybody uh, that is involved in industry or manufacturing is looking at blueprints and reading and interpreting those blueprints so this is going to uh, start you off uh, you see an actual print here this is from the uh, Eisen or Asen manufacturing company um, in Illinois um, it is an actual manufacturing company uh, so and this is one of their parts uh, you can see here of course we've talked a little bit uh, in my classes about the title block um, your border lines. Uh, so we've got some other things going on here as well. And uh, some of this you're not used to yet, and that's all right. We're gonna kind of walk you through this step by step so you understand and can kind of tell what it is that you're actually looking at as you're looking at. Now, you will see, of course, we do have the uh, front view, your top view, and your side view. And of course, here is a shaded isometric drawing uh, of what that part looks like, the solid part when it's actually there. So, and hopefully you'll start to see and connect the relationships. Now, on this print uh, and on this particular activity, uh, you're asked to look at the views and answer some of the basic geometry type questions that are on there. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. I'm gonna go through a few of these things as we go. Um, the first part is talking about the front view is the view in the lower left corner. So uh, that's this front view right here. You guys already know that. Uh, and it asks, how many circles are there? So, well, let's, that's easy. Let's just count those up. So I see uh, this circle, which actually represents a threaded screw hole. So there's one, two, uh, three, four, five, because we also have the circle here uh, for the hub. So, so we've got five circles in that view. And notice this circle here is basically the hub that sticks out and projects over there on that uh, in our isometric right here. So hopefully you're starting to pick up on some of these um, visual clues uh, on these particular drawing problems. Second question asks, how many arcs are there? Now remember, an arc sometimes is also referred to as a radius. Uh, we won't count any of the circles as arcs. Um, so I have this arc right here. So there's one. Then I also have this arc down here as well. So there is two. So there are two arcs uh, in this particular problem. Now, question three, how many points of tangency are there? Uh, again, you have to recall what tangency means. And a tangent point uh, in geometry class is basically where a line comes in and just touches uh, a arc or a circle. Now, you can have tangency points between uh, an arc and a line, between a line and a circle. You can also have them between two circles. You can have them between an arc and circle. So you have tangency points um, between different geometric shapes. So, so we have to look at and count the tangency points. Well, we're gonna have a tangency point basically every time a line connects to an arc, providing that they instantly transition to and uh, start the arc. So um, so here, this line has a tangency point to that arc. So there's one. Here's another. So that's two. As we go down, uh, this point right here, that's a tangency point as well. So that's three. We come around. Now notice this doesn't hit at the 0, 90, 180, 270 it's up a little bit but it's still a point where that's touching so so that's a tangency point as well and let me kind of just as a, I can come in at anywhere on this arc so and I can draw a tangency point 
at any place on this arc, if you recall. So again, it's any time the line just touches that uh, arc or that circle, that is a tangency point. And we have the same thing here, down here, from going with this line going into here, uh, there as well. So let's go back and count them again. So there's one tangency point. There's one here. There's two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got six tangency points. Question four asks, how many sets of concentric circles are there? So... Again, remember, concentric circles are circles uh, are, that share the same center point. So, so we've got one set of concentric circles here. So, and that is this set right here where we've got this circle and that circle. Uh, these are concentric. They sh both share. This is the center point. Now, we do have another uh, spot on this front view uh, where we are seeing some concentricity but in this case it's not concentric circles so over here this arc is concentric with this circle uh, they both share this center point and notice that center point is a little bit up above the center point on there so those center points are not in alignment with each other but um, so this arc is also concentric with this circle but the question asks for uh, concentric circles and since this is not a circle that is not a set so we've got one set of concentric circles now going on number five the top view is the middle uh, is the view in the upper left corner in that view how many circles are there so well we only see the one circle that's this circle right here uh, and that is a, a hole, a, a threaded hole. Notice the call out right here where it says uh, tap for M5 through. So, so that basically is a call out hole for a threaded uh, screw hole to go in there. Something that's going to be tapped for an M5 screw. Uh, and that's what that hole is. So we just have one circle there. How many hidden dashed lines are there parallel to each other? Now, remember the difference between a hidden line and a center line, and don't get these confused. So these lines here that project out of and over the uh, outside object lines, th this line, this line, this line, and this line, those are all center lines. So we're not going to count those. So let's come back to the... And really look, I want you guys to really look at these and see the difference between a hidden line and a center line. So this will give you a better idea of what those two type line types should look like. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine hidden lines in that view. Uh, now, you don't, not requiring this, but one of the ways that we can tell and see the relationship, uh, if I want to know where this hidden line here shows up in that view, well, I just kind of have to put a sheet of paper down. Uh, notice, so that hidden line uh, in the top view is basically this point here from that tap hole in this view. And I can kind of move over and you can see the relationship as we go on what each of these particular uh, line types are um, and how they were related to the other views there as well. So just a little step there uh, as a way that we can use to look at and read and interpret these blueprints. So uh, number seven, how many lines, if any, are tangent with the circle? So, well, notice this line comes into here, but it intersects it doesn't just touch it touches at an intersection and a tangent point is not really going to be an intersection those lines are not going to cross they're just touching so so there are zero uh, tangent points in the top view so going on the right side view is the uh, lower right corner so number eight here so asks how many vertical visible lines are there? Now, they're calling this a visible line, but a visible line is the same thing as an object line. So uh, we see one, two, 
visible lines in that. Now, notice even though we're only seeing these two visible lines, uh, we know that there is this surface back behind there that kind of cuts that part in half, uh, and that's gonna be represented by this hidden line here. So, so we only have two visible or two object lines there for number eight. Number nine, what geometric term describes the general shape of that view? Well, I think we can all agree uh, if we look at this overall, it is a rectangle shape. So, uh, so rectangle is the answer for number nine. And number 10, what's the relationship does the dimension line have with its extension line? Now, these are two line types that you may not recall or you might not have been exposed to yet. So let me point these out to you. So here we have the dimension line. So that is the line where we would actually put uh, to indicate what the size or the dimension of that feature is. The extension lines are these smaller lines that kind of come out. Now notice if you zoom in, if we were able to zoom in on this, you will notice that the extension lines do not touch the object lines. Uh, they're a little bit over, but they extend out past the actual object lines to kind of reference and let us know what the dimension, where the dimension starts and where it ends. So, and here in this case, uh, we got this zero point down here. So this dimension starts here at this line and runs all the way up here to this line where it is uh, 56 millimeters or 2.20 inches is the actual dimension of this part. So, so, so those are some uh, new line types for you. The extension line is this line and that line, and then the dimension line is this line here. Notice a dimension line will also always have an arrowhead. Arrowheads, and usually there's arrowheads on both ends of that dimension line. So what's the relationship be then between this dimension line and that extension line? Well, of course, that's just perpendicular uh, relationship that exists between those uh, line types. So, so there you have it. There are uh, questions 1 through 10 on industry print exercise 4.1. Uh, again, part of starting to be able to visualize and see this is looking at existing prints and being able to start to read and interpret some of these prints. You guys have already done that, of course. Uh, you looked at prints and read some of this when we created the uh, clock, and you looked at prints, of course, when you were creating a, and making uh, your tool tray as well. So uh, this just gets a little bit deeper starts to get a little bit more involved. So, uh, and of course, don't worry too much about it uh, because as you go on, you will get more and more uh, advanced and be able to see and understand a lot more about what you're looking at when you're looking at these blueprints. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, send me an email. Uh, we'll be glad to get back or you can also just leave a comment uh, there in Google Classroom. So, Hope you have a good week, so uh, keep in touch. Let us know how you're doing with these.